So far I talked about having one value here in the chart, so this is only 3M displayed in the chart. Let's say we want to have an additional value in here. Let's say we want to also display uh, Microsoft, for example. So we can right-click on the chart and say, show additional graph. And when we look for Microsoft, we can see, okay, Microsoft Corporation trades at 24, so this will scale our chart and see. Okay. So we have now two values inside of one chart. So we have DM up here, Microsoft down here. We can attach indicators to Microsoft as we wish. Let's say we have the moving average because it's simple. It will paint the moving average down here, but it will actually calculate the signals up here. So now we can use another symbol for generating signals on your main chart. You can also hide it here. And then you have the signals created depending on Microsoft inside of 3M. A use case which many people often want is they want to not have two separate values, but they want to compare values. So they want to see what is the development of a stock in comparison to another one. And this is also possible if you right click on the uh, symbol which you want to compare. So it's 3M and you can say add overlay. And an overlay, if you add Microsoft as an overlay, for example, then now load Microsoft again. And we cannot see it really good right now, so this is why I will change the chart style to line. And if you change it to line, you will see Microsoft was loaded, and it is now compared to the development of 3M. And the way it is compared is by anchoring it to the left side of the chart. So the left side will always be the same. So you see it, they start out the same and then 3M loses and Microsoft has some profits and then they kind of go hand in hand and they cross. And now when you change the left side of the chart, the anchor point, then the calculation also changes. So you can adjust it dynamically to the starting point where you want to overlay and when you say okay I will start the beginning of 2011 and since the beginning of 2011 that's a pretty clear picture so 3M has clearly outperformed Microsoft so let's get rid of this again and, um, and jump to the next section now the element which we did not look at so far in the chart object tree is actually the chart itself. Let's discover what preferences we have in the chart entry. When we click on the chart one and then we have axis, background and scaling. So let's start from left to right. For axis we can define how the axes are displayed. So we can have a additional left axis here and we can manipulate the chart. We can turn off the right axis if you like it better on the left or have them both. We can have a line at zero. Zero is all the way at the bottom here. So that's this one. That's good for oscillators if you have a subchart window and you don't want to have the zero line. You can define what the color of the axis are. This is the black one here. You can show a grid in the background, the little dotted grid which will connect the prices and the dates. You can define the color of the grid we can also state if there is a, a legend visible. The legend is also only visible if there's an indicator. So if you have an indicator, then there will be a legend up here. If you move the mouse there, it will disappear. So you can uh, later on draw without being obstructed. So you see the legend with the, with the current parameters. And when you press the control key, you can also see details. This is the current value of at this position. So let's hide it again. So let's turn off the legend. We don't need it. Um, what is quite interesting is the signal line. So if you have a moving average like that and you turn on the signal line, then it will 
show you in the bottom in which phase you're currently on, if you're uh, long or flat or short, depending on your backtesting set. So in the green areas we are invested, in the, black, in the red areas we are flat currently, and we can really quickly see this down here with the signal line. And then we have a very powerful tool available for us, um, which is the price profile. So it's hidden in the chart axis settings, but actually it's something like an indicator. So if you activate the price profile, it will show us a vertical histogram of the prices. So it will count how often a price appears in the chart. So here it starts, so they appear once. Then you'll hear some more occurrences, so the bars get bigger. Here are not so many occurrences of these prices, so they are smaller. And here are really, really many occurrences. Now I think you see where this leads to. The price profile will tell you uh, possible support and resistance zones. And automatically for the 95% case it will draw horizontal lines. So it will automatically illustrate where the system thinks there could be a possible support and resistance line. So the neat thing about this is the price profile is oriented on the currently visible chart area. So if you change the chart area, the price profile will adapt in real time to what is shown on the chart. So you can have short-term resistance lines, you can have long-term resistance lines. Easy as that, simply scroll the chart and you are up and running. Now coming to the background tab, currently we have something which is called color cycle. So the color cycle will cycle through the time intervals. So currently it's a monthly cycle. So each month is colored even oddly in a different color. Good red. It's not pretty. So I stick with the default. You can adjust the colors as you need. Of course you can have a single color, you can have a gradient so you want to go from gray to, uh, to blue. Then you have a gradient in the background. You can have your own picture, company logo, or any uh, thing you need in the background. And um, that's basically it. Very powerful. It can be set per chart. So if you have subcharts, you can color them differently, just as you like. And this brings us to scaling. And in the scaling, we have two methods. One is linear and the other is logarithmic. So logarithmic will change the scale here so that smaller items have bigger distances than uh, higher values. So this does not work with oscillators because they have values below zero. This is when the chart will automatically snap back. What just happened will snap back into linear mode. But if you don't have the zero boundary, then log scale is active and you can actually have, you see in the grid spacing also how the distance is changing logarithmically. Let's switch back to linear mode. What we can also do is can we can invert the price axis, we'll just mirror it. We can have percentages displayed here. Percentages are calculated from start from the opening close here to the close value here. So this is an 18% increase right now which we're looking at. So very easy way to tell. And of course it's also dynamic. It's hooked to the left side. So if you change it here then also the percentage numbers uh, adjust. We can also have the right axis in percent. And we can also round the prices. So because we have these crooked prices and if you round them they are in two-step increments. So that's our tour through the basic preferences of this object tree here.